everybody welcome we are uh, doing another episode of custom clubhouses it's a short series that i'm doing in which i look at some amazing clubhouse designs in pga tour 2k21 uh, a few weeks ago i talked to baby bull and uh, we discussed his clubhouses today we're going to talk to somebody else uh, today's sort of a lego episode we're going to talk about building blocks like wall segments and bridges to create custom buildings and to discuss that i'm joined by tyson who is known as trail ducker in all uh, his pga 2k21 activities uh, tyson is known for his um, i want to say extravagant design style and he builds the clubhouses to go with that style tyson welcome thanks for joining me today Hey, thanks for having me. How uh, are you? Doing all right, doing all right. Yeah, did you celebrate uh, a little bit yesterday? Yeah, yeah, my, I live in my hometown, so I've got to spend it with the fam, and we just got our first snow this morning, so I tried to stay warm. Oh, nice. How, how much snow did you get? I'm not sure. Looks like maybe maybe an inch. Okay, cool. We we didn't get we we rarely get any snow here in the Netherlands, but it is freezing outside. So um, the wine half wine bottle that I left outside was uh, uh, a weird sort of uh, yeah ice uh, pop lolly thing. <laughs> An ice, um, uh, you can have a wine slushy. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, Chad, uh, you're welcome to join our conversation. Uh, please do ask your questions whenever you feel like it or respond to what is said. We're recording for YouTube, but uh, this is very much a live thing as well. Um, we are at Infinity Mountain right now, one of the courses that Tyson built. Uh, this is actually the course that uh, introduced you to me as a designer Tyson I didn't know you before this was uh, made for the uh, design syndicate battle I yeah that was the name right it, which yeah. started out as uh, the the Facebook dream team uh, sort of uh, uh, yeah, uh, spin-off um, so we're not here for all that the courses the course uh, uh the golf course uh we're here for the clubhouses today and uh you have built some amazing clubhouses on this uh course so i wanted to touch uh on um the basic idea like the first idea for the clubhouses but also on how you uh actually build them how you plan your plot a little bit uh, but let's start with uh, uh, with the idea first. Um, I want to know: did, you, did this all start with the idea for the clubhouses or the idea for the course? <laughs> um, well, yeah, this project is a reversible design, and I I did all the routing and all the whole designs before ever jumping into the designer. And yeah. so while I was drawing it out on paper, I had these ideas for a clubhouse overlooking the course. This aesthetics of this course, pretty much just the aesthetics, but the wild waterfalls and rocks were loosely inspired by Payne's Valley, the part of Payne's Valley that apparently isn't boring. Um, <laughs> but uh, all around the clubhouse area, <clears throat> where they have the kind of rock walls like this. So I had in mind how in Payne's Valley, the clubhouse overlooks most of the course. Mm -hmm. um, so I had this kind of spots and then that made me, since this was uh, reversible, similar to the loop uh, by Doak, that made me think, well, this will just be a mountain resort. So yeah, that's what that whole area that you were looking at with that lazy river is, is a resort area that overlooks the course as well. So as I was drawing out the routing and the whole designs, I had the area saved for um, the clubhouse overlooking and the resort area overlooking the course. Okay, so when we look at the whole plot here, we see the whole routing. Then this area here you kind of marked as do not use for golf am i correct yeah yeah so uh yeah and that right below that like that kind of l shape is the 19th hole that yeah. is kind of a, a it's a drivable par four take on the 19th hole at Payne's valley so i i knew i wanted some kind of dramatic waterfall behind it as well uh -huh. um 
so that was all kind of uh, marked out ahead of time when I drew up the routing. Yeah. And that 19th hole is the wink to Payne's Valley. Yeah. I mean, apart from the fact that all these rocks are there, but so, so, okay. Um, so a clubhouse overlooking the course, uh, that means that you will want to have like a big patio or a balcony that actually overlooks the course. Well, I think that's what you did here. Uh, that's a pretty view, it's... man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So uh, definitely, while thinking of the clubhouse before building it, I I knew I wanted a bunch of viewing decks for um, overlooking the course, and and um, and then in my mind I was thinking of well, they would probably would use this for other sorts of events as well which as you see on the opposite side that you're of the clubhouse, I've added a little, um, wedding venue. And, yeah, there um, it is. So I, I kind of went to town on this mega plex of a clubhouse, um, thinking of kind of different ways that this resort would use just this building. Mm -hmm. So when I build my, uh, custom clubhouses, uh, I, I, I think, uh, technically I have more or less the same approach as you. Uh, but what I find, uh, is the biggest difference between you and me is that you have, uh, probably have an actual idea of what a building should look like because you are in architecture, right? Yes. Yeah. I'm a, I'm an architect myself. Yeah. So how much of that do you actually use when you uh, create a building like this in the, in the PGA tour designer? Um, it does help in terms of forms and kind of think of forms. Maybe I see or forms that I've used or forms that I've maybe scrapped projects in college when I was designing and you kind of have to, you, design and this kind of is how I do my courses too where I design starting with the more e extravagant and kind of wild ideas and then you kind of hone hone down to something a little bit more um which the argument is do I hone down to something more realistic but um <laughs> you kind of hone it down from there so some of these kind of concepts maybe were taken from some of those ideas mm -hmm. um, and then I just do a lot of google research and um I like a more modern architecture aesthetic. So yeah. I um, do more Googling of clubhouses that are modern and um, to kind of give me some more form mm -hmm. ideas. I don't. Um, so, uh, so some of the stuff that is being said in chat, uh, Baby Bull says Stonewall work is on point. Uh, which is a compliment, not a question, but there is a question from Guter's Boo. Still don't know exactly how to pronounce the name. Do you do, uh, do you design clubhouses in real life or, or I've, I've never worked on the golf course project. Um, so but what kind of buildings do that. you do in real life then? Gooders. Um, I have a, in my, um, career i have like a wide range so just recently i worked on a high school in portland that was completely remodeled uh -huh. and um the new firm that i started at recently does a lot of kind of nice high-end uh senior living so i've been doing some of those i've done libraries and um different housing styles and so i uh some medical facilities so i have like a wide range of projects that i've okay. worked on so th this could actually be a high school if you look at it. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, it's so, totally good. Uh, let's move to uh, some other buildings that you made here because you, you th it's not just the clubhouse, but there's a lot of large buildings on this, uh, on this uh, premises. Uh, talk to me about w w w what are we seeing here? Is this uh, like a resort or? Yeah, so this is the resort side. So I wanted this to kind of match the aesthetic of the clubhouse but you see these much less so they're not as detailed but mm -hmm. really the most detail is the roofs um and yeah. i just sunk the same city buildings that i sunk for the clubhouse yeah and then added these roofs on it so you see them and then you can see from the course side i mean theoretically these decks would wrap around the whole project but um yeah, the, you see here the, the balconies. Others, uh, 
Yeah, yeah, those the would the wrap around in real life, yeah. probably the whole building, yeah. but I only did the course side because uh, my object meter was maxed out on this course. So. Yeah, and this is an interesting thing that I discussed with Baby Bull uh, last, uh, in the last episode, is that if people don't get anywhere close to those buildings, uh, it, it, it's not necessary to go all out on the details uh, uh, on the sides that people don't see. So at one point, I think buildings like these also become more of a two-dimensional uh, thing that you see from a distance than, uh, than the clubhouses or the, 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 uh, the items that you get really close to. Do you, do you, agree, uh, yeah. Do you agree? Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you could even argue, do I need those houses behind on the other side yeah i didn't know if they ever kind of see their rooftops poke out but i gave it a little bit more detail for this type of thing when people fly over i mean yeah you never would see that lazy river that i built in the middle from the club but mm -hmm. gave it a little bit of dressing for people to still fly around and yeah, the, the what about Amy Obi's in this world will appreciate that. Yeah, in <laughs> hindsight, in hindsight, I should have put a goat in the middle of that. Uh, lady oh river, yeah, <laughs> I was should... still kind of new when I built this, so I didn't know. I didn't so know that, that would a goat be and a squirrel soon. because you also want to make uh, gamer ability happy. Yeah, <laughs> he always looks for squirrels on courses, and then there's this little uh, little uh, building here. Which also has a patio. Is this like the a little the coffee shop house. or or? Yeah, kind of. Since this is all way below the clubhouse, this is a halfway house in between. Oh, okay. Yeah. What is? So that's the ninth hole on loop A, tenth hole on loop B. So yeah. this is kind of halfway house overlooking, trying to see people hit this drivable par four or hit it in the water um <laughs> okay so yeah, that's, that's where that, that's where thing. the sausage rolls are sold um celtic wolf is saying that the gaps that you put in those walls give it a modern look uh and uh, yeah I, I really agree uh you did this on your um uh what's that course that you did for the uh national treasure uh contest yeah valid Vala da Lua. So yeah. with this, I'll kind of, I can kind of explain the process with that. Uh, since I, I Googled and would kind of get these uh, different style or different looks that I was like going for. So with this, you know, you could see it's all the stone retaining wall. I would build the whole retaining wall to create that, that whole look. And then I would pick parts of the, wall to take out to make these kind of viewing windows yeah and i would do the same if you go to the other side you could see um there's a hole in the court like in the um uh deck on the other side and i would kind of do the same thing where i just grabbed and then yeah on the roof too where i just would grab some of the those are the flat wood bridge. I just would grab. Yeah. I wish they would make a really long flat concrete bridge too. Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. And I would, I would grab some of those to create those deck openings. Yeah. So one of the problems that we all experience when we're building stuff with this bridge is this glitchy stuff that's going yeah. on. If you're doing it, like if and if you're building. Uh, a large, uh, a large building like this, it's impossible to to prevent that because you need to kind of customize and, and place them in different ways uh, to get the look that you want. I did find something out. I know this is an interview, but this is a little tip that I can give uh, to uh, people in chat or maybe even to you: is that if you just give it like the tiniest, oh, yeah, yeah, just the tiniest click down or up the glitching will disappear and you will not see it um you will not see it glitch like this anymore and it's not perfectly straight baby bull says uh tough to build with that's true because you get the i think baby bull michael you're you're referring to the oh my camera work is a little bit off today you're referring <laughs> to this uh aren't you yeah yeah those sides like 
sticks out a little. Here. Yeah, that's a little bit weird. And what I do do find uh, is that this little that right there, you see that once uh, once in a while. Yeah. Uh, depending on the lighting, there's a little bit of a weird shadow that comes in. Hi, Daniel in chat. Is Frank Lloyd Wright one of the architecture influences or people he gets inspiration from? Well, Tyson. I mean, definitely. <laughs> Frank Lloyd Wright is uh, amazing. Um, yeah, so he definitely influences the style. Um, but you were bringing up Bala de Lua, and I got the idea for that clubhouse after, while building this because you see those kind of squares that I start, but I take one corner off on mm -hmm. uh, this clubhouse. That's where I had that idea, where in Valle de Lua, it's a black city building kind of shoved into the uh, cliffside, and I created Let, let's go there, this actually. large... Okay, yeah, I can explain, because it, it does the same concept, but uh, different a different city building, so it's a little darker, and then... Um, a little bit less, uh, just less building. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, the adventure course has the same building, right? Yeah. Just, yeah, it's just, all the same. Just nicer lighting. Just a little more sexy lighting. <laughs> okay. Loading time. This I got a new PC coming was... in Tuesday, so the loading time should go down. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, this lighting was what I wanted to do the whole course on, but uh, I knew it would be a little too dark in spots. But uh -huh. the, the venture routing gives me that, that option. Let's see. Where are we going? There. Now, this, yeah. is, this is really when you... Uh, yeah, the, the, here you can see the influence, the Frank Lloyd Wright influence, I think. Yeah, this one's definitely more modern influence. So this uses the concrete steps as the vertical, uh, or I mean, sorry, as the horizontal, you could see that layer. And then mm -hmm. I didn't want to fill it all with one step. So I would add the wood. Well, you should bridge. talk to, uh, you should talk to baby bull. <laughs> He's the <laughs> concrete step king. Yeah. Um, but that's where I kind of had this concept of these, viewing and this one again was where i uh drew out the routing uh, before going into the designer so i i knew i wanted the ninth and 18th green to be a big double green that this clubhouse overlooks and um, where um, is that exactly that's down there right yeah a little bit to the right uh here i think things kind of got like shifted as i was building it the clubhouse <laughs> in my mind when i originally drew it was like directly over them but they kind of got shifted but um mm. so still came out nice but i i saw on a actual clubhouse that kind of rooftop viewing deck that you see there it was just like one little pop out i made it two in that kind of elbow on top but mm -hmm. um so you have the big viewing deck that overlooks those and then two kind of smaller viewing decks above oh, this it. is this is such a nice view <laughs> especially yeah, with that so is really... this sunset or sun uh, sunrise in your in your mind um i believe the setting was sun setting okay could be could be I, well it's on the it's in africa on the west coast so west coast so then it's sunset <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, they, I I really like this one. Actually, I think I prefer this one over the ones on uh, Infinity Mountain. It's uh, it's, it's more it's more it's subtle. Much more, yeah, the scale works more <laughs> than that large, massive. Uh, Infinity Mountain is also only. I mean, this is my fourth. Infinity Mountain is my third course, so you kind mm -hmm. of learn different things. And scale definitely was something I was yeah getting more of a handle on here. Uh, where Infinity Mountain, that was kind of my second course was my first approved course, and then that was my first competition course. Yeah. So I had to. So and this little elbow on top, on that is tops. that is completely custom built. Right? There's no yeah, there's all... no city building uh, base 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 here. It's just that walls and uh, and the bridges. 
Yeah, yeah, it was completely just uh, built that, started with the corners, built the walls out, and yeah. then, um, yeah, and then those are, the black parts are just canvas walls, so it was all completely built out of and the that, walls. And that's, that's so funny about designing in uh, PGH or 2K21, because you have so limited stuff to work with, so limited options, and uh, when you get into building custom clubhouses, you really need to get creative in using those. Um, and sometimes to, to some designers that, that I talk to in, in, on Facebook or, or wherever, um, and, and they'll ask me to play their beta and they, they build like whole cities. I'm, I'm telling them, hey, you're not playing SimCity, you're playing, uh, you're designing <laughs> a golf course, don't don't design cities here but uh with clubhouses i do think there's something to say for building a really nice custom one because it just adds so much to the look of it um what i want to ask you is how do you think do you ever think uh i wish i wasn't spending so much time on my clubhouse uh instead of on the golf course itself i mean do you, does it distract you from from the golf part of it um For me, no, because <laughs> I love a good custom clubhouse, and um, I, I do just feel like they add so much, even though you're kind of, I mean, this one, you only see it really poke out a few times in the round, mm -hmm. but um, no, and I usually do my clubhouses pretty early. Um, uh, at least I will, I'll start and lay some stuff down when I do my routing. And then usually I'll go in, finish all the surfaces. And before I do any planning, I do my clubhouse so I know how much meter it sure. will use. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that I'll have to plant with because I feel it's easier for me to skim planting here and there in parts you don't see than skim on the clubhouse when I have a look that I want in my head. Yeah. Um, so. And then I just, it, it kind of starts to bring the course to life for me. So, mm -hmm. um, so I, I love to do it, to do the clubhouse first and then create little avenues to look at it while you're playing and, yeah. um, show off my work <laughs> and, um, sure, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's, there's no point in created it creating it if nobody's <laughs> going to see it or, or only going to see it at the end of the round. Right. I mean that's why I had the 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 ninth and the eighteenth coming back to the clubhouse on uh, El Lobo, uh, the course that I did for the design syndicate. Uh, uh, yeah, and a, a shout out I'll I'll give to somebody is um, that I've noticed, and I noticed it today playing his new course that just dropped this morning. Is Petro loves to kind of route in ways where mm -hmm. not just a ninth or eighteenth will go back to his clubhouse. He did it on his national treasure course. He just did it on his dream team course. And, um, and that's something I definitely want to kind of utilize a little bit more. And some of my routing is go back to the clubhouse at weird times in the round. Um, yeah. It doesn't have to always be the end of the ninth or 18th. Um, cause I think he does it on his sixth. Um, I really like on his, uh, national treasure on the 16th. It looks like it's ending. And then it, or maybe it's 15th. It's one of those that looks like it's ending and then it goes on another little kind of loop. Yeah, the last it surprises you. I've been, th yeah. um, so I, I, I've been talking to a, a golf course owner here in the Netherlands and uh, he actually said, and I think it's a really interesting idea. He said, why don't we make routings that, that have the clubhouse in the middle and then have loops of three holes uh, going all around it, like in a flower shape. So uh, you don't, Oh, it's not just that you, you go back to the clubhouse very often, but you can actually customize your golf round. You could play like uh, 1 to 18 uh, on one day or, or uh, uh, 4 to uh, 3 on another. Uh, and, uh, I mean, you created a reversible uh, golf course, but uh, having a golf course that you can basically customize in that way, I think it's a great idea. You uh, you have imp impeccable um, transitions because I kind of did that with this routing. I wasn't thinking of customizing your 
uh, round, but I kind of did this with this routing on this course where I did these little triangles. So mm -hmm. if you look on the left, um, it goes one and then two is straight across above and then three kind of tucks back to the clubhouse and then four, well, that's 18. That one is one. And then, um, it's broke, broken fairway to the right of mm -hmm. your cursor is, oh, there, is the yeah. first fairway. And then on top is two. And then three is those two angled, um, yeah, that's two, and then that's three, okay. and then four yeah. is the island green. Five, six yeah. comes back. I to see the where you're house. going. I kind of, yeah, I did a, a wheel, kind of pinwheel style with little triangles, and then the back nine kind of goes around the edges huh. um, on this. So I kind of did that. I didn't uh, think of that's an interesting thought to like customize your round. Um, <laughs> well, I, that's I that. believe. I think it's a great idea, and I think it could work very good as a routing. I mean, in the, in the in the game, obviously the round is is just set, or, or you'll have to yeah. create like eight different publishes. But uh, for real life, yeah, I think I it should, could work really well. Maybe I should just publish this six different times. But um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and get and, six uh, and get I'm, six different. Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, six different times get the heat for <laughs> for the <laughs> for the geometric shapes. <laughs> did I get did I get heat for this? Um, <laughs> oh, you got yeah, you uh, got a little heat for this, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> um, I think it was the most recent Friday egg, or one of them. We're talking about Sheep Ranch and uh, the podcast, and uh, they were talking about the original concept, which doesn't work on a public but on a private where you do kind of customize your round mm -hmm. and, um, but yeah, that's an interesting thought. It, it is with the mechanics of the game setting your round. It is hard to do. Yeah. You yeah. Publish, publish a million times. Gooder said, uh, you, you should get into clubhouses. I think in real life, because you have some <laughs> amazing ideas. Uh, a thing I wanted to touch on here is, uh, the bridges here. Because, uh, I mean, in general, I think you've used lots of the technique that you used before. Uh, with the bridges and the, the, the similar looking buildings. But what struck me in this clubhouse is this huge like ramp that you made. And uh, here's where I really want to get into the technique a little bit because how do, yeah. you, how do you line these up? I mean, I, I see how you do it here. It's time consuming. I do this myself when it's straight. But when they're tilted like this, it gets so difficult, yeah. I think. Um, yeah, so you you tilt it just a little bit, and a little bit goes a long way over a long uh, run. Sure. And the the button that lets you um, sync it to, or I guess align to your last one is a lifesaver because if you mess up or you have to leave or you need to take a break. <laughs> For your hands or anything mm -hmm. you do that and it, it it matches the alignment of what you have and then you adjust it up or down yeah um, hemo thanks for the follow man and the difficult part was the ed the the kind of exposed opening on the short the skinny side looks pretty bad so i had to you could see i flipped a bridge the opposite direction for these ends <laughs> mm -hmm. so that it's, it's not kind of the exposed so that you have to kind of just touch basically overlap them and then yeah. get the yeah. alignment to be uh to match and then adjust it up and down so so and i get that you was, can uh, i i get that you can align them but uh oh, here's that weird shadow showing again yeah that's just a little glitch uh, nothing we can do anything about. Uh, if you'll allow me, uh, let's go into uh, the designer for a little bit, and I'll I'll, I'll try to show uh, the viewers what I think is so amazingly difficult about this. Let's go into Jitta Dunes for a second, uh, and let's uh, assume I was going to create a really... Uh, camera works different in the designer. So here's what I did for a little 
uh, entrance on uh, on uh, yeah. Jitta Junes on the so so you can see I I use the bridge sideways. But what's so difficult here is that if you try to um, where where are we bridges? There we are, standalone. So let's say I was to create another one of those things. So I go here, I tilt the bridge. So there's one. Hey, Carpman. Hey, Jimmy. How are you all doing? Are we getting a raid here? Oh, wow. Yeah. Thanks for the raid. <laughs> I didn't even see that. Sorry, I was so concentrated here doing my own thing. Uh, how did your rounds go, Jimmy? Welcome to so, PGA Architecture. Yeah, welcome to PGA Architecture. <laughs> Another also, follow. there is so, a... I don't know if it's... Uh, it wasn't doing it there. Sometimes there is a glitch, too, where you try to match it, and then it just tilts. <laughs> yeah. It just tilts yeah. it to some... But but uh, I'm I'm right in direction. thinking that so now yeah. I align it, but then I have to manually raise it to uh, actually align with the previous one, right? Yeah, and on Columbia Wetlands, something I so I'm on Google Stadia. I'm a, a weirdo on the, <laughs> and that's what I built my courses on. I, this is good, you know. This makes structural sense. You should keep this and republish it um <laughs> i uh yeah this just bridge out to nowhere over practice but i um on columbia wetlands i started strictly using mouse and keyboard um okay. and i actually started now and especially on the course that i'm currently working on for the rookie competition i developed a way when i'm doing things like this where you need to raise it because it's a little more difficult to to raise it incrementally at times on mouse and keyboard. I uh -huh. now have a method where I bounce back and forth between the mouse and All um, right. and the controller. Because the controller, you can keep it stationary and drop it up and down, but it's hard to perfectly align it because it's kind of more incremented mm -hmm. where you use the mouse wheel. So I'll get it to where I want, and then I'll like use the mouse wheel to finish it off. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> I get it. Because with the controller, this is just, I mean, it's time consuming to make these straight, but this way, I mean, you're never going out this far, but uh, I just wanted to show. Um, let's take a look at chat here. Uh, Elboy says, build a strip club and a casino. Um, are you talking to Trail Darker or to me, Elboy? And Jimmy's CC rounds went great. Minus 21 and 16. Platt sucked. Minus 11 and minus 5. True Sim was hard. Wow. True Sim was hard. But that's uh, Pinehurst too, isn't it? That is a hard course. <laughs> and Celtic says, the strip club will be a new thing in the game. Yeah. And Baby Bull, he's... Uh, uh, oh, yeah, well, you uh, replied to him in chat already. <laughs> Amazing that you are in Google Stadia. In other news, Charlie got himself an Xbox, so he's not the only person dumb enough to design on uh, Nintendo Switch. No more anymore. excuses, Charlie. No more excuses. No, I, I, I told him the, the, the days of minimalism are over. <laughs> anyway, um, so, okay. I talked to Baby Bull before about uh, his uh, um, scaffolding approach. So uh, I thought that was really interesting. What he did on the treehouse uh, clubhouse is that he actually raises the ground to a certain level so the camera of the designer doesn't mess with you. Uh, do you do, you do that uh, or, or what's your technique uh, if you're going higher up? Uh, on, That's, on that is like, I, I saw that too. That was a really cool idea. I've never thought of that because i usually um am like oh the the course is sacred when i'm building these so, like i never thought of of raising ground around it mm -hmm. um, and if it depends on probably the level of designing that you're designing sure. other stuff yeah. on the the one specifically he was talking about it was out in the middle of nowhere but uh if you try to tuck tuck 
your course around it, you probably have to do it very early in the process. Yeah, yeah, you would have to build the clubhouse first. Uh, I mean, here there's 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 only visual stuff around this, so I could have easily done it here. Actually, I did raise the ground here because that green is on top of the clubhouse. But uh, uh, yeah, yeah, if the if like the the ninth hole is right there, uh, you would have to do this before and then start routing your course around it. Um, I want to move to another designer's clubhouse. If we're talking about bridges and placing them manually, this is one of the great great examples uh, in this game, I think. I'm talking about Celtic Wolf's course. And I'm just going to type in the name so I don't have to try to pronounce it because there's no way for me to do this. Oh, and then I typed it wrong. Nice. This is a really awesome clubhouse as well. It is. And the, the story behind it is just amazing too. So let's start around. Uh, I need to... So I got a whole write-up from uh, Celtic Wolf about this. So this course... Celtic, I'm yeah, go ahead. I was just going to ask. Uh, I'm pretty sure he did this really early on because I remember seeing a picture of the clubhouse like months before this was published. I just love being on PC. <laughs> oh, my player is actually moving. I'm moving the camera. Uh, yep, yeah, there we go. So, same basic techniques, totally different look. We're looking at two city buildings, the black ones here. There's that oval shaped one and the straight one, a uh, square one. But then he's gone and used a lot of wood to create this. Now, the, the idea is the course is based in Finland, so... Uh, Celtic told me that he wanted to create a clubhouse that would be suitable for the location. So Scandinavian countries, they tend to use wood in their buildings. Uh, but he said, uh, manage to keep them stylish and modern. So that's the look that he wanted to achieve. Now, uh, there's these two black city buildings that he sunk down. Uh, so there was only a few floors above the ground. Actually, to make that happen, you kind of need to raise the plot a little bit. I think it's... It's not massively raised, but these are not the highest buildings. Uh, if you do want, this is just a tip that I'm giving, if you do want to use the, the really tall buildings, you have to raise the plot up by two, 300 feet uh, to be able to actually sink the building down enough uh, uh, for that. But what's so interesting here is that we've talked about those bridges, right? And uh, putting them straight the or, round or ones. tilted. Using the round ones. This was is, genius. Yeah. This Creating the so wavy cool. roof yeah. was genius. So Celtic, you are in chat. Uh, I want to know, um, you talked a little bit in your in the story that you wrote for me, you talked a little bit about this, uh, this building uh, being something of a, a wink to um, environmentally uh, friendly building. Can, can you explain a little bit about that? And while you type that, I'll just uh, make another round around this clubhouse. So as you can see, this this is all retaining wall, which takes uh, a bit of planning because you need to know how far down the retaining wall actually will go, and then you need to leave some space for the for the windows. Obviously, uh, I think this is a little um, uh, a little barbarian golf design thing, the black and the white. Boo. Boo, yeah. <laughs> but there's green as well. Here, it says clubhouse in green, uh, Tyson, so greenskeepers should be happy. Uh, uh, that's that's our entrance. <laughs> that's your entrance, right? Actually, Side the entrance. first thing I thought when I saw this is, oh, that's a, that's a cinema. Does it look like a, like a theater uh, room on top?
didn't notice the double fencing before. Double fencing? Oh, yeah, there we go. There's double fencing. Yeah, I just this just looks so awesome here. I think he did a great job on this. So Salt Kasing, what he what he done is sloped the roof so that when it rained the water would run off into the pools at the lower end of the clubhouse. There are the pools. Yep. So all yeah, the rain will go down here, and then probably they would have to do something with that water, perhaps uh, hydrate or, gray or water irrigate system. the course. Huh? Maybe a gray water system that they send the water to, and then they use the water to water the course. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that is very interesting to me uh, to have that kind of thought put into a clubhouse uh when it's basically a secondary thing uh because you're i mean you're primarily creating a golf course uh but this is what we touched on before tyson is that a clubhouse uh, especially if you route your course uh, to go back towards the clubhouse at least two times but maybe more times it becomes such an integral part of uh of the the experience that you get as a player right yeah yeah because it can be part of the story of the whole course yeah. as well. The Celtic is actually saying the water in the pools would be piped down in underground and used in the clubhouse. So that was the idea. So let's take a look. Uh, so the retaining walls we touched on, uh, that took this course, gives me wood. <laughs> uh, the water supplies for the pools. Oh, that's interesting. For the pools, he used a specific city building that has a stone surface on top, sunk it down just above the ground level. So it may seem odd to use a whole city building just to get a small stone surface, but uh, it did get the right look and it broke up the surfaces a bit. After that, I used stone walls and a double, double water plane trick to create the pools. I created the surrounding fence by just laying down a normal fence, then lowering one down just in front of it so there was less space between the slats. For the seating area, I used white canvas walls and sunk them down, then used the advanced edit on the blue markers to create the Finnish flag. Oh, I haven't even seen seen that. Oh, wow. Look at that. The Finnish flag is there. Oh, I there. never noticed that either. There is but some attention to detail. And this, I can vouch, is very, very time-consuming to get right. <laughs> yeah. The favorite part of the clubhouse has to be the sloping roof, he says, as it's not a common feature feature of clubhouses in the game. Yeah, yeah, this is so great. So, um, I think we've touched on uh, technique. Uh, we touched on the idea behind building a, a custom building like that. Um, I just want to know from you, Tyson, um, do you when you build a clubhouse do you intend it to match with the course and 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 if so how yeah uh, basically i kind of think about the location or the style of clubhouse and then google search that to kind of get some ideas so um say in columbia wetlands that was based in the Northwest, and since I'm in Pacific Northwest, I kind of know what newer buildings are looking like. And they use CLT is a lot to create the floors and roofs, and then a lot of curtain wall in between those levels. So they kind of look like they're floating wood levels. So I was kind of going for that look, whereas on Infinity Mountain, I wanted something still modern, but something a little bit more in the that would fit in the mountain and that's where i used a lot more of the stone walls and mm -hmm. uh, things like that and then um say the course that i'm gonna be publishing later next month that course is based in arches national park and i googled the visitor center which is actually pretty cool tucked into the landscape building and on that course I would look at that picture and kind of recreate in that style something with um, 
And that's again with a lot of the stone walls and things like that. So a lot of it's kind of looking in the style and um, say if you kind of want something more rustic or older, you can kind of look in the um, Google rustic golf course clubhouses or something like that to kind mm -hmm. of help you get an idea. And then, and then when you have that image that you're looking at, then you look in the objects and kind of just dance around in them to figure out how to get the look you want and try to be creative in using those objects. Um, I will say where I want to get better at is mashing buildings together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, that's something that I want to get better at because uh, you, I just do the kind of city building trick where I, city buildings and wall and use retaining walls and bridges. And I want to get better at, uh, cause I've seen some really crazy ones that mesh buildings together. Um, you should watch uh, the next episode because I'm talking to skinny post who is, I think a master yeah. at that. Skinny, uh, I, he's some, he's in a similar, I'm not sure if he's an architect, but I know he's in the architecture field as well. Mm. And yeah, he does some amazing stuff. Uh, so yeah, I'm excited for that because um, he is real good at knowing the objects and mashing them together yeah. in creative ways. Last question: In the new uh, the new game PGA Tour 2K23, I think it'll be. What do we absolutely need as clubhouse builders that isn't in this game yet? Um, I mean, definitely more buildings would help. Um, more walls would be nice too maybe not such a mortared nicely square stone wall but something more round messy looking stones mm -hmm. that could be in a retaining wall um i kind of wish they just would take away the um land part that's in the wood retaining wall yeah yeah um because a lot of times I want to use that, but then I have to like find a way to hide that. Um, I understand why it exists where I feel like they should find a way to make it not need to exist when you're using it as an actual retaining wall. Yeah, and it, it doesn't um, and then, it doesn't even work that well as a retaining wall. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, that's why you have to double and triple it up. Yeah. Uh, and I agree with what Celtic was saying of separate parts. Um, yeah. Definitely windows and doors, at least, because um, they could give us just more options in retaining walls to use as walls. Um, but definitely, yeah, being able to just plug in a window and a door. That's why I use the kind of city building, because you can have, theoretically, a door in a whole curtain wall. And <laughs> you don't have to... Uh, make it known like this is the door so i but, think um, yeah. i think all of this all those separate items they would not be necessary if there would be a possibility for the game developers to open this up to uh content creators like uh, in city skylines where people can just uh, uh upload custom-made buildings and you can use them in your in your city designs uh if that if that could be like a, a little bit more of an open source approach to uh, items that can be used in the game, that would be really awesome. The only problem is pr uh, probably that um, if, in, if 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 a building comes close to the course, it needs a hitbox, and I mean it's not just visually uh, a thing, but it's also uh, a thing that becomes a, a playable item, uh, of course. Yeah. But but. <laughs> Um, yeah. yeah, more of an open source approach to uh, to what's in the designer. That would be so awesome if they could they could do that. My uh, take, if they were to be dramatic or dramatic, not the word, but bold to go that route, is um, they would really have to develop a good search system um, mm -hmm. for us to search for a particular item. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> because. It, um, you can have it, but then how would you find it would be, yeah, it would be like really difficult unless you have certain key names that you save the item as that people can search that key name. The problem is that it, the, the difference between PC designers and, and console designers will only get bigger then. 
because it will become yeah. even even more uh, even easier for PC designers to work quickly uh, compared to the ones on PS4 and stuff. But yeah, just get a PC then. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, one thing, more thing I yeah, would yeah. say is one long concrete bridge. Yes, definitely. Uh, Without just edges. Recreate that wood one. Yeah, recreate that wood one and just make it straight, flat, concrete box. <laughs> yeah. Because I would use that a lot. Yes, and I think a lot of designers will use that a lot. I know Baby Bull will, uh, and and I know several others who will. Uh, thanks for joining me, Tyson. Uh, thanks uh, to Celtic Wolf, Pat, for your uh, info on this clubhouse and... Uh, yeah, thank you guys for building these because they're they're also an inspiration to me. Uh, I think an inspiration to a lot of other designers. Uh, there's more great custom clubhouse designers out there. One of which is uh, Skinny, who we just uh, mentioned. Uh, he will be on the next episode if all goes well, and we'll talk about his uh, his way of uh, doing this. And that's a different approach than what we've seen today. So uh, thanks again, Tyson. Thanks to Chat. Uh, any last words, yeah. Tyson, before I uh, send you off? <laughs> uh, no, thanks for having me. I hope everyone had a good holiday season and we'll have a good new year. Don't uh, don't drink and drive. Uh, nope. And don't uh, be, be careful with any fireworks if you uh, are allowed to uh, fire that. Thanks, uh, thanks a lot. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye.